we're out here in Corona at Concrete Motorsports. This right here is our Masonmatic five-speed transmission. Saw that billet? Oh, nice. She's a work of art. After, uh, as you guys have seen, our year plus uh, highs and lows with it, I think we now have it really figured out. It's been performing excellent. So we're really stoked with our choice to go to this transmission. This right here is what we call a Rocky. This is the Herb Smith Fab truck that we raced at the Mint. I just flew in from Vegas, man, my arms are tight. My head is aching and my feet are sore from four days of being wild. Uh, Mint 400, I love the festivities, the history behind it. I love being able to drive down the boulevard. Driving race cars on the street in the middle of Vegas is a different feeling. Abide by the law and the rules, no burnouts and stuff, but uh, it's really cool just going down and seeing all the people lined up on the side of the streets from the bars and the restaurants and over the overhead, like wondering probably what the heck is going on, but uh, it's awesome. Qualifying for the Mint, uh, we were pretty far back in the pack. Had a plan to win, you know, I wanted to do as best we can, start up front. Had a solid run going, nailed the first few corners. They built this crazy man-made whoop section. I felt we got through that pretty good. Right at the end of it, uh, there's a big berm. I must have been missing my bicycle, so I threw it in there a little hard and Toss this thing up on two wheels. She fell back down and I just felt good from there. I thought we had a really good run going. I got to the road crossing towards the end and they're yelling and waving and uh, they stopped me. I guess there was a rollover and then a safety truck in the way, so I had to do another run, which some people might want two runs. I did not want a second run. I was not happy about that. All the crazy moments I got away with on the first lap, I had too much time to think about it and correct them and not do it again. I didn't bicycle the next lap, I overshot some corners, then I flew over the berm. Do it on the other side of the bicycle. Uh, lost about five seconds on that. We ended up, I think, sixth or seventh. I was bummed. I was timing. I know what we did and what we lost. So for me, the second run was not beneficial. Day the goal was I was gonna do the first two laps. Kevin was gonna jump in. Uh, Mint's one that's eluded us. We want to win really bad. We came in with every anticipation of winning this race. I uh, started next to BJ Baldwin. Honestly, I was quite surprised that I lost the drag race. I've had pretty good luck here against some very big names. 
I made a little move in and dive in on him, and I thought, uh, I didn't think I could intimidate him like most others, but he, even after our little contact, he squirted me harder. Got close to him a few times and his truck just, uh, I think it puts the power to the ground very well and it goes forward very hard. So BJ is just a phenomenal driver. I'm sure all you guys see in his videos is car control and everything, he has no fear. A dude can just drive. You're gonna get beat by people like that sometimes. <laughs> I got to sit in his dust for a little while and that uh it also changes the game plan a little bit too because usually if you win the drag race you have a minute so you have a minute to just get situated get everything dialed in and get going but when you lose a drag race you're just amped up and pissed off and you want to catch the guy back in front of you Once he got me, I had a plan. I had uh, made a move on him in this section with really big holes on last year. And, uh, we started reeling a little bit on the leg bed, jumped into the long set of whoops. I think they call it the thumpers. I actually kind of popped in my lane because the holes got big, so I just jumped out. And there was dust in that lane with big holes. So I pulled up next to him. Looked like we just wanted to like take a picture next to each other. Diced it out around the left-hander. He got me when I hit some big holes and then I tried to dive in him on the next U-turn. And uh, it was exciting. Uh, going back and forth. He ultimately, I uh, smashed into a little tree and then uh, once again, his truck up the wash squirted hard. And then dust came into play. But uh, that first, I think 20 miles was uh, some of the most exciting stuff I've done in a race car in a long time. Before all that battle, uh, me and Bo were talking, we could smell oil. I don't know if his truck was overheating or whatever, but uh, I knew he was gonna, I knew he was done. Pull into the first pit and he's, sure enough, he's pulled over. Something about a misfortunate oil tank crack, but uh, we ultimately got him in the end. the first lap clean. I noticed the hood was bouncing a little bit uh, after I contacted BJ. Going across the leg bed, the hood flew up. And literally covered the windshield at high speed. And I'm just telling Bo, look for telephone poles so we don't veer near them. We're doing 140 plus, if not some more, and I couldn't see. Hood was flapping a lot. Hood was up to here for half the time. You can see all the scratches in there. There was a GoPro there that got rearranged by the hood flapping. At that point, Rob Mack and Householder were right behind me. I was thinking up the course, taking it too easy, so they were, they were catching me. I thought for sure they'd get me. So I had to do 20 miles with the hood flapping over my window. Um, luckily for me, 
Uh, Rob Mack only got closer, didn't get around us. We uh, picked, up, picked it up a little bit the next lap. I wanted to have a cushion for Kevin and Brent to do a driver change so we didn't lose track position. So uh, came around the end of the second lap. In my eyes, taking easy paid off. Rob Mack would end up having a transmission issue. Householder had a drive shaft issue, dinged a drive shaft. So we had a pretty good cushion behind us. So I gave the truck to Kevin third on course with plenty of time behind him for them to do a comfortable driver change and take off. By the end of lap three, Lofton and Pat had both expired, so we're the first truck on the road. Kevin was going, running clean race, and uh, held the whole third lap with no issues. And then, uh, oh man, coming right into first spectator zone, we had a drive shaft issue. Exploded a U-joint and it took some stuff out. Caused a little damage, so we had to uh, get it to the pit. We repaired it. Team jumped all together, got a truck together, and Kevin and Brent just had to cruise into the finish about 70 miles, and I think we ended up ninth. Next up, we're getting this truck ready to go pre-run the San Felipe 250, which we'll leave next Monday, the 27th. And then we'll get our days in, and then we jump in the race truck for qualifying on Wednesday and Saturday. Game on. Get on down the road to Mexico. One of my favorite parts about San Felipe 250 is that it's the shortest Baja race we have. It's more of a sprint style race, which is, I kind of like that a little more. Be 110% the whole time. You go wide open whoops to some super tight sand washes, and then it's just uh, challenging and fast. Then you have the aspect of Baja too. So you have all the people, the spectators, and the challenge of Baja, which we don't have that in some of these stage races. Yeah, starting off the score season this year, we're still in our uh, two-wheel drive Herb Smith Fab truck with our Joe Gibbs engine with the Mason Matic five-speed behind it. The qualifying run went great, I think, for, uh, for what it was. I uh, did the practice lap and I, I was pretty bummed. I like the big, hard-packed, rough qualifying courses where we do better. I hate the whole two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive thing, but it's factual. That course favored the four-wheel drives. I went into it with maybe like the little slower approach. not making any mistakes, not overshooting the berms, try and just stay on the course and get out of the corners fast. My goal was to be the fastest two-wheel drive and beat some of the legend four-wheel drive trucks. I was having a great run and came into end of a long straightaway into a pretty tight left-hander. I had the truck set up for the corner and it must have hit a hard berm or something. It kind of kicked me out. I was trying not to hit this big old tree because I thought I was going to be able to just make the corner wider and then there's a Can-Am sized tree trunk there so I had to go around that and then it dropped into a hard right. But uh, definitely wasn't going to get me top spot or nothing but I was just bummed because that was my only mistake I made during the time trial or the qualifying and I wanted to have a super clean run. It might have knocked off two seconds but I still would have been in the same position. I just wanted a clean run but 
Guess it makes for good TV then. We gotta do it, right? <laughs> Ultimately, end of it, I came out, I think, seventh or eighth overall, fastest two-wheel drive, and I beat the two four-wheel drive legends I wanted. It sucks I was that excited to be eighth place, but it's where we stack up, and it's what we got to do until we get a four-wheel drive to be back contending for the top spot again. Game plan for San Felipe was I was going to qualify and start, go to about 165 and hand the truck off to Kevin. He was going to bring it to the finish line. This morning was going good. We're all down with the mellow con right in front of everything, right in the ocean breeze and all that. I want to do good, so I get nervous like at the start, you know, you got to get going and get settled in a little bit. We start right in town and you get to give it a squirt for a little bit and then you get a little speed zone. Right off the bat, unfortunate for Dan McMillan, I saw him pulled over like mile two. So right away I was like, all right, we got some clean air for two minutes. Everything was going good. Missed a couple turns here and there. My driving style for Zoo Road is as fast as I could possibly go. <laughs> Our truck with the King Shocks and Fadi and Henry helping us set it up, our truck works phenomenal. I can hammer Z-Road as hard as I want, and uh, that's what I did. Half the time, we're not in control. The truck is bouncing and just doing whatever, and we're doing 100 plus miles an hour. Along with 
with uh, people lining the road, like part in the sea like Moses, we have metal telephone poles that are 100 feet tall, I think, I don't know. And there's people hanging from them. People hanging out the side one-handed, trying to get that shot. It's, uh, it's quite interesting, not gonna lie. It's, uh, there's a lot going on down Z Road in front of the side of the race. <laughs> Started seeing some dust, so we were we were getting up there, and then uh, yeah, about mile 30, all neutrals. <laughs> Lost the drive shaft. I melted the bearing caps off the end of the U joint and. They were sitting there, devastated, like, we were going. We already had one guy, we were cruising forward, and then uh, luckily for us, Cole and them were right there in the chase truck, helped us fix it, put it back in, and then off we went to try to make as much time as we could. Are we good? You were good, sir. Thank you. Fine. Kind of takes the wind out of your sails, but then you have to, have to gather back up and focus. You're still there to do good. You got to keep going for it without making mistakes. So we started cruising along. We started nailing lines and started catching dust, getting by some people. Unfortunately, about 10 miles before our driver change, we lost another drive shaft. Same exact problem, melted the bearing cups off of it, threw another one on, ended up getting the pit, come to find out. We had worked our way back up at the fifth physical truck. When we got the driver change, we made some time back up. We're gonna win, but at that point we wanted a solid spot for the 500 since San Felipe finishing is your starting spot for the 500. So ended up getting the truck to Kevin and he took off. Pretty clean run. They got a flat. I think they overshot a corner a little bit and got a tree or a rock. So they had they had one flat, and then uh, about 30 miles from the finish, they started noticing a pretty bad vibration as well. In keeping in mind to get his finish, they kind of limped it in.
they got to the end and all the bearing cast for a third time were melted out of the dry shaft. They limped it in, saved it. Just crossing that finish line is an accomplishment itself. Coming home with an 11th place finish, we're stoked on that. It's a good finish with the competitive field we have and it sets us up for a good spot for the start of the Baja 500. You know, with the new all-wheel drive debut, we had to take the boat down, park it in the harbor, walk over to the truck and check it out for the first time, you know. The learning curve, I believe, for myself is uh, they say you got to go a little slower to go faster in these you don't drive them on the edge of out of control kind of a big learning curve so far to figure out you don't have to come in the corner and set the truck up sideways so to speak you just drive through it with the four-wheel drive it's kind of kind of crazy i guess you could say you don't have the hardly letting the truck as much <laughs> as you do in the two-wheel drive <laughs> we're still going to try to put on some good videos <laughs> Tech to me is a great day. I guess you can almost say it's a relaxing day, but it's a chaotic day. You're hanging out there, passing out stickers. I got my big dorky red hat that I like to wear just to look like a goofball all the time. <laughs> Tech was awesome in the new truck. The way people were coming up to this truck, it was as if it was Mason's first truck. Obviously not their first, but uh, the product came out so nice and they, like, the truck is beautiful work of art. People were just all over it and uh, pretty excited to see it. Connecting with the fans, giving them hats, throwing them out there, like just, it's awesome. It's like just a really, really good feeling and uh, letting them know how much we appreciate them appreciating us being down there. Kevin Thompson, Harley Lettner. Not only are they fast, they got hats. Pina Porta, Cincinnati. Uh, really looking forward to getting some seat time in it and uh, figuring it out. Kevin got the driver yesterday and uh, I think he's still smiling. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday for the first time for about 60 miles, so it's going to be an interesting race. Loved it. Can't wait for the, can't wait for the race. Down in Ensenada, Ball 500. Do you have my tuba art films interview? Uh, it's getting ready for the start. Uh, Kevin and Brent. Gonna jump in here a little bit, head over to staging. Excited to finally see what this four wheel drive is all about. Yeah, definitely excited. Got about 60 miles in it, and uh, I think down here it's just gonna be, I think it's gonna be a game changer down here. I mean, just keep moving forward, we're gonna be all right. What'd you guys do that Herb struck back there? It looks a little worn. Um, don't put this on the film, but that big fellow was driving, and uh, it was cherry Monday morning, and there she is now. I think there's a lot of trees and stuff in this section. <laughs> Hey Brent, uh, what uh, what mile are you driving to? Are you excited to drive today? Uh, uh, I can't reach the pedal. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Blocks, you know. Is that a size 20 foot pedal? Yeah, we had the goal of the 500 was uh, to finish this one. We didn't go down there to try to set the world on fire and win. We went down there to try to learn the truck and get a solid finish out of it and get a lot of seat time in it. Uh, this race uh, with no qualifying, uh, Kevin was going to start and bring me the truck down it around Trinidad, around the race mile 270, and that's where I jump in and bring it to the finish. One of Kevin's favorite parts off the start is uh, start on the highway. 
It's about a five, maybe six mile long stretch. His favorite thing to do is leave that line and uh, hold the truck wide open as long as he can. I'd be scared to ride with him down that road, but I can imagine he held it wide open in this brand new truck to see what that uh, Gibbs engine is going to do all the way to the end. Your adrenaline's already going pretty good and then you crest over the top of the rise and then you just see hundreds and hundreds of fans. I know for me, you come over that and it's just like, dang, we're in Baja again. And the fans just love it. They're going crazy for you. in their backyards half the time, at least along their fences. I think that's what keeps us coming to Baja and just loving it is just the support of the fans and how much they really enjoy us being down there. He was already up a spot right away. Like that's mile 30 or 40.
starting in back, I think he had a puncture uh, right front. So that put us a couple back. And, uh, Derek Jean right there. passing isn't that easy the dust in some areas is very very bad he sat in it for a while and got frustrated but uh all in all got me the truck and uh continued from there I was just excited to jump in and drive this thing. A whole different animal for me. So I was really excited to get in this truck and uh, just cruise, get to the finish line and uh, get some seat time and learn this new beast. settled cruising around Brent was telling me about the truck he's been in a four-wheel drive with Jones before so all right you know just taking it in and then not that I was the fastest but it just started feeling good I was clicking along through the trees popping wheelies and I just you know twisting all through there cutting over the crossover road and uh, I was having fun Start heading to my favorite section, heading down to the coast. When you get close, you can kind of start smelling it a little bit, and then you crest over one of the big mountains and all you can see is just the ocean right along the beach. And then uh, to me is one of the best parts. Something about just taking a trophy truck down to the beach and going as fast as you can right along the coast is pretty rad. Crossing the finish line is half the battle. If we can't win, the next best reward is to come across the finish line. To me, I like the last right-hand corner. I know the race is over, but uh, there's something about pulling up, down, and then hitting that last right-hander and throwing the truck a little sideways right before you get to the podium. Two more films. I really love seeing you at the finish line, you know? I know I'm late, you're tired, you missed dinner and Pilates, but I'm here. That feeling is just like, ah, it's just, uh, just one of the greatest feelings ever. I can't wait to do it when we're overalling it.
pretty cool to have back in the shop and start learning it, start prepping it and get ready for the next one. But we're uh, pretty happy with the decision. My favorite part on this truck is definitely not CVs. I thought I got rid of those when I got out of the buggies. Hmm, my favorite part is probably a driver's seat. Uh, right? I mean, it's the most fun. All this stuff. Right here we got our uh, front portal. Our axle going into our front diff. That gives us our uh, forward bite. We got a steering box down there. Uh, you can see that. Don't look at this little... Okay, yeah, uh, we won't. Let's talk about your tips. What are those? Ooh, these little tips that Mason built for us? Well, I believe Mr. Andy McMillan was the first one to have these titanium tips. And uh, we wanted them too. Pretty rad. They, uh, right now they're a purplish color. But uh, they change colors every time you drive it with different heat. Kind of rad. It sounds crispy. What bump stops are you speaking of, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. I don't see any bump stops on this truck. Oh, yeah, no, these bump stops, we don't talk about these bump stops. What's that right in there? That right there is a uh, big old Joe Gibbs racing power plant. No, not that. Nobody cares about <laughs> that. What are you looking at? Yeah. A tree? I didn't see that from back here. You put that in there. This, Kevin must have went off course. There's no way I would have done this. Uh, truck out to the ball 400 looked really good. We had zero issues with the truck itself. Um, I did not have four wheel drive at the 500, so this is my first race with all wheel drive. And it's just, uh, I got some things to learn. I need to figure out how to enter corners and check up for the corners and drive out of them rather than coming in late braking and sliding it like I'm used to. So learning curve, it was really good getting the 400 solid miles in. Next week, I'll put some more miles in it and just try to uh, apply some of the stuff I learned that I was doing wrong at the 400 and go from there. It came down to I was going to do the whole 400 in the Mason Hollow Drive truck, the number 70. Um, we had Jesse Jones in our Herbst truck number 71 his goal was to make sure we got a decent spot for the thousand if anything happened to us so so the Baja 1000 starting position is determined by the finishing position at the 400 and the hedged up bet they called me and asked if I would drive one of their uh, two-wheel drive trucks our game plan was just to drive around and make sure we stay consistent and uh, didn't do anything stupid and get the truck to the finish line First time in the four-wheel drive, my mindset was win. I wanted to go out there and see what I could do against the best of the best. So I went out there and I was trying to tell myself that this course, the aggressiveness, didn't work last year. Had a good run, um, one of the downhill 180s. I late braked, so I overshot that corner. And then uh, a little frustrated, overshot another corner onto the trees.
ended up coming out fifth. In the big scheme of things, fifth for race day was a very good spot to start. And yeah, qualifying did not go. The first half was good, honestly. A nice conservative pace. We were just looking to try to get in the top 15. And I knocked a tire off halfway through it and had to finish the lap up with a, a dead one in the back. We asked Toby not to embarrass us. Told me he was just driving mad because he made a mistake. It looked about like a nine to 10 second little turnaround and then goes out there and puts a whooping on everyone by over a second, I still believe. The dude is one of the very, very talented people in the world. And uh, like I said, we asked him not to embarrass us. Then he goes out there, does a donut joy ride and still beats everybody. The dude is just, he's crazy, he's on another level. To go head over staging for the ball 400. See how we can't make happen today and get some good results. I'm gonna have this little Otis Spunkmeyer blueberry muffin. Is that the secret? <laughs> I'll let you know tonight. <laughs> What's this new jump I heard about? There's a really big jump, about mile 20. Nice downhill, very big lip, not much of a landing. I may or may not have actually did it, hit it very fast in pre running. We tested the new jump. Um, I think we've got definitely the limits found on the new jump, so uh, I'm gonna ask for a little less excitement today. I had a game plan to try to stick with Luke. Dude obviously knows how to win races, so game plan was I told the crew to give me splits on Luke every time they could. Hopefully stay within the minute on him and uh, not get ran up on by Bryce. The course was super tight and technical and dusty, so if we all bunched up, odds of doing good in the end are pretty good. It's awesome, you know. It's been seven years since I've raced down there. To see everybody and to see the race course lined with people and the amount of just uh, enthusiasm the fans of Mexico have is, is amazing. Well, James went huge on that thing in the race, uh, dubbed out the new Deaner jump. Um, we popped the nose up a little bit and I didn't go full Dean. We had 400 miles to go and I was uh, wanted to make sure I got it to the end. So a little check up, a little wheelie pop over and that's about it.
honestly, I was given 100%, but <laughs> I think only like a 75% pace. So, um, man, trophy truck racing has changed. The pace that these guys are going is, um, it, it's certainly changed since the last time I've gotten to drive a truck. One of the left cuts at like mile 22 or 23, and uh, Brent called rain rut. First gear, both feet on the brakes, trying to check up for it, and caught the rain rut with the right front. Ripped the wheel out of my hand and bent the sector shaft. Um, sector shaft in these Mason all drive trucks is the bottom of the steering box, determines your angle of steering. You bend it, your steering wheel gets cocked. Mine was about like that all day, and therefore only giving you about 30% left-hand steering. Turns full to right, but not to left, so I'm flipping out because I made such a big mistake so early, and Brent's calming me down. More of a hiccup for Harley, being that his paddles are now top and bottom rather than side to side. I've never felt that before. I've heard about it happening. I thought I broke a tie rod or something. The truck was just all loose and all over the place. Ended up getting on a graded road, figuring out the steering was fine, and kept cruising along, didn't lose any positions, just time. Uh, let go of the wheel and the truck's tracking straight down the road. Had the guys look on the road and they said everything looks straight. So, all right, just had to drive like that and our truck's paddle shift, so that means the shifters are stuck like this. So I don't have the spline steering where I can move it back. We have the wireless and so I was driving like that. Right before about kilometer 77, we started seeing a little more dust than normal. I, yeah, there's no way I'm catching Luke through this. Like we were trying to figure it out, driving, and I'm just trying to get my head back in the game. And, uh, and then we get on the highway and Luke's pulled over, changing the tire, like right in his pit. So we got Luke and it was just like, oh man, all right, we just gotta keep cruising, gotta keep cruising. it was mile 60 or so we um, I got a little frustrated in in uh, the car in front of us and so we pushed up through the dust and I got into the back of him tore the hood up as I was hitting him and when watching the hood uh, get destroyed I thought oh this is not what you're supposed to be doing this is not your job so um, we got by him and then that was the only contact that we had with anything the rest of the day for sure don't go out and jeopardize our finishing position because the job was to get the car across the finish line 100% for sure. About race mile 75, there's a left-hander hard 180. There's a pretty decent rock on the left and a Volkswagen size rock on the right. And you gotta go left and dog leg through it. With my steering situation, I couldn't make the left. So we stop, go to throw it in reverse. We had no reverse. That's when we realized what kind of trouble we were in. Uh, no reverse, we can't turn left other than probably 40-50%. At this point I'm blocking the course, Luke and Bryce are coming. Drago here turned into a king of the hammers rock crawler. I put it in first and I bump the rock and it kind of kicks the car back a little bit. So I just bump it again, it gets it far enough back and I crank it as hard as I can, put the whole left side up on this rock and we got around it. a time split that we were still doing decent with Luke behind us so I was super excited because I thought I was driving too slow and I don't really got the pace of the four-wheel drive figured out so I'm whining the truck that my pace is too slow Prince telling me we're doing fine 
time says we're doing fine. And then, well, 90, 90, 92 coming down and it's pretty grooved up and there's a hard right, or not even a hard right, it's a flowy right. Uh, I missed it. And there's a humongous ravine rain washout and the truck just goes and just lays on the side like Luckily for me, a bunch of people cars started running up, so I was like, okay, we're not really in the middle of nowhere, but chances of winning the race are over, so let's, let's just get it over, get refocused, and get to the finish. And then all of a sudden, this white truck comes flying through the trees, grabbed a strap, they flipped us over, got going again. I think we pulled out right behind Rossler, um, trying to do the math where he started, and like, all right, we're still, we're still up in the trucks. Uh, the hunt's out of the question, because we started fifth on time. So time, we couldn't do nothing, but uh, at that, point after I tipped it, the name of the game was starting position for the ball 1000 and getting the finish clean. I could turn right all day long. If it was a right-hand course, we were dialed. Um, actually, I think it turned further right this time because that's so much right steering. I'm pretty hard on myself for my mistakes, um, costing us what could have potentially been the win. <laughs> End of the day when we get back, we always gotta take the positives. We ended up coming in 11th, which with a couple guys dropping out, will give us a top 10 star for the thousand, so that's a positive. Didn't really see anything wild out there. I know that there were some crashes and things, but honestly, we never even saw them. We were just kind of just driving along at our, uh, in our own little world all day long and um, really didn't notice anything. Jesse had a pretty good run. I think he, uh, from the looks of the hood, he had a couple issues with some people in front of him and lost some time helping someone get unstuck off a rock in a bottleneck. But he ended up coming in 12th, so. It was nice to be back in Baja and just, you know, getting to race through all the spots that we've raced for the last 20 years. truck made it to the finish line no issues with that and Jesse in the 71 made it to the finish line no issues there so end of the day the Baja 400 was a huge success for us as a team and a truck but we just want that number one spot like always 
Rage, you know, you just kind of show up and drive and, and just raise hell for the two days, and that's, that's what's fun about it. Short course, two day, only about a 50 minute race. It's aggressive, you line up two, three wide. You know, you're door banging in Rage. It's really good for the fans, which is lots of fun. That's why this year we took a lot of employees from Texas. It's just so fun to come to and just relax and, and just have a good time. So I did the morning race, did that to pre-run, but also took a few of uh, my employees for rides on Saturday and Sunday. Kevin's doing the sportsman race in the trophy truck. He's got some employees from his Ameritex plants in Texas. Um, they've never been to a race or the desert, pretty much. Uh, he's just giving them rides, a uh, little employee appreciation. Uh, Kevin Thompson's racing with Kevin Thompson. And, and Lettner. And, and, yeah, and. Hey, wait, hey, we have the whole thing. Oh, no. Hey, we have Bo. <laughs> you combine those three, that's a, that's a, oh, that's yeah. a. Oh, yeah, just wait, right it's gonna be here. badass. They had an absolute blast. I've never seen this stuff. You know, employees from Texas, they're not familiar with off-road racing, so I let them see uh, my personal side, my hobby, my passion, and they absolutely loved it. Never told me to slow down. I gave them a hell of a ride. Be able to talk to them and tell them, you know, the corner's coming up, the jump's coming up, you know, this and that. I, I don't know why, that, that was really, really fun. That was like one of the funnest times I've had in a while, is taking them for a ride again. They went for a good, good ride, some good jumps. It was, it was a blast. I mean, I absolutely had a blast and they loved it. So could you see anything at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now us as racers, we, go through a big puddle and get the mud and everything all over us, get the trucks dirty, we don't like it. But it was funny listening to them just giggle and, and love it and have it a blast in, in the truck. They were just, just again, hear, hearing them ha having so much fun in the truck and getting dirty and everything they thought it would be, you know, it, it was really special. One part when all the mud came flying through, he was a little pissed, but I thought that was so exciting. <laughs> So qualifying that race this year, it, it was a really smooth, short, I don't know what it was, probably two and a half miles, so it was pretty, <laughs> pretty quick. It was smooth for us. I think we had the wrong converter in the truck. That's why we were a little off pace. We qualified fifth or something, so started second row. That's a blast. I love running, starting two, three wide. I'll take that all day long. Again, that's rage. That's radical rage, man. It's 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 aggressive. Well, I'm not the one that you wanna be facing. Hitting those moon bumps at first, man, it's, you're hoping. <laughs> it's pretty, can get pretty hairy. So you, you pin it and hope you don't lose it. This is my
what's it like having so many cars? I, I don't know, somewhere between probably 50 and 60, I would imagine, started in our, our heat. You know, by the time you come around, you're already pretty close to, to lapping some. So, again, that's a fun part part of rage, uh, but that's aggressive part of rage too. You know, you gotta, get a, you gotta be aggressive, and we were pretty aggressive out there. <laughs> put the bumper to a lot of trucks and uh, a lot of vehicles and that's just what you got to do. I mean the race is again five laps, 50 minutes long. some three three vehicles at a time they're all stacked up and that's rage man that's again radical rage that's what I love perfect end of the season again having all the employees about 20 employees out there giving some rides it was it was everything we were hoping it could be in it in it and it was and rage didn't let us down yeah. next race for us I believe is going to be the legacy uh, Parker race but we're gonna pack in as much as we can as much as this team can put together we're gonna pack it in I, I, I got to get racing more